In the previous video, we saw that information contained in DNA is processed in the cell through transcription and translation. The sequence of nucleotides in a particular gene specifies the sequence of nucleotides in an RNA transcript molecule, which in turn specifies the amino acid sequence that is put together to form a particular protein. So, in essence, the sequence of nucleotides in a DNA code for proteins. These proteins are responsible for orchestrating nearly every single function of the cell. But this is not all that is there to DNA. The segments of DNA that code for proteins are just one part of DNA. Scientists have figured out that different pieces of DNA can be classified into different kinds of biological parts based on their specific function. These parts can be thought of as functional units or building blocks of genes. Later, we will see how synthetic biologists can use these parts to build their own quote-unquote genetic circuits. Here is the basic structure of a typical gene. Labeled are four basic parts, the promoter, the ribosome binding site, the coding sequence and the terminator along with the usual symbols for the same. There are many other kinds of parts but these are the ones you will see come up most often. During transcription, large protein molecules called enzymes attach to the DNA and carefully assemble a matching stretch of RNA. These enzymes are gathered or recruited by the promoter. They then start copying the nucleotide sequence until they reach another part called the terminator, which makes them drop off. The enzyme moves in a particular direction specified by the promoter. We call this downstream. This is why there's an arrow in the symbol for a promoter. Thus, the RNA sequence matches to the part between the promoter and the terminator. As you may remember from the last video, all genes cannot be expressed at all times and places. For example, your liver cells need different proteins from your skin cells as they have different functions. Likewise, you produce different proteins when you are sick compared to when you are healthy. For example, antibodies which are needed to combat infection. It's the promoters that are responsible for these different kinds of expressions. Some promoters are constitutive, which means they can always show transcription. Some are inducible, which means they switch on transcription in specific situations. And some are repressible, meaning that transcription is usually on but is switched off in specific situations. This kind of gene regulation is super important for synthetic biologists too. You will see more about this in future videos but for now, let us go back to our example about the glowing plant. Here, we have a gene that codes for a protein that is when produced allows the plant to lighten up. When we use a constitutive promoter, the protein is continuously produced. So, the plant is always glowing. We can instead use a promoter that is induced, or in other words, turned on and off by a certain chemical. This means that the protein coded by the DNA downstream, which in this case is the light-producing protein, would only be expressed in the presence of this chemical. This would allow us to make a part of the plant glow only when we sprayed it with that chemical. Alternatively, we could use a promoter that is repressed by light. Then, during the day when there's sunlight, the promoter would be repressed and the light-producing protein won't be produced. But in the dark, the protein will be expressed and the plant will glow. The ribosome binding site plays an important role in translation and the coding region is the sequence of DNA that actually codes for the amino acid that make up the product protein. Now think about a simple electrical lamp. To build this, you require some wires, a light bulb, a stand, switch to turn it off and on, and maybe even a nice lampshade. Only when you put these things together in a specific way, you will get a functional lamp that you could use. This is a good example of using basic parts to build a device we could use in the real world. Similarly, in synthetic biology, basic biological parts or strips of DNA such as promoters, ribosome binding sites, coding sequences, etc. can be put together to build a device. A device is a longer strip of DNA that one can engineer into a cell to perform specific function. 
we learn more about them in the next video. We hope to see you there. Bye.